In this video, we will talk about the most important things to keep in mind and be aware of before traveling to Bali. Stay tuned for our complete Bali travel guide. We will talk about everything from how to get there, how to get your visa, the new law and what to visit and where to stay. Post-pandemic Bali is a little bit different, but also similar to what it used to be. If you like this kind of video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for us to be able to make more videos like this. Doesn't matter where we go and destination or no, I don't care where the motor stops, cause when I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it, oh, I want it, let's go. Bali is an island in Indonesia surrounded by the Indian Ocean and the Bali Sea. It has a surface of over 5500 square kilometers. Bali is not a typical flat surface tropical island. It also has some beautiful mountain areas with the highest peak being Mount Agung that is also one of the active volcanoes of the island. Bali has an almost even climate all year round with an average temperature of 30 degrees and 85 humidity. It has two seasons, dry season from May till October and rainy season from late October till the end of April. Although Christmas and Easter are in the rainy period, Bali is a very popular tourist spot for those holidays. The official language is Indonesian, but the native language is Balinese. Most people in Bali speak at least two languages. You will be surprised that a huge number of Balinese speak very well English, but also Chinese, French, Spanish or even German. For those who were worried about the language barrier, please relax. Balinese people are friendly polyglots, ready to help you discover the island. Bali is a predominantly Hindu island. You will be surrounded by beautiful temples, incredible rituals and stunning ceremonies. Even though the largest population is Hindu, on the island you can also find Christian, Buddhist and Islam places of worship. Balinese people love their traditions, being it religious or not. Everywhere you will see beautiful home temples, sculptures and the daily offerings. From sarongs to traditional clothing and their dances, the Balinese stick to their roots and we could not be more happy for it. Arriving in Bali, Denpasar is the airport that connects this island to Indonesia and the rest of the world. It has an international terminal and also a domestic one. One way to get to Denpasar is to take an international flight from one of the biggest hubs in the world. There are plenty of flights from Asian countries, but also from the United Arab Emirates, Qatar or Turkey. Another option is to fly international to Jakarta and from there to take a domestic flight. Over 80 countries around the world are eligible for visa on arrival. This is the type of visa that you will get at the airport. It costs 500,000 Indonesian rupiahs and you can pay it in rupiahs or other popular international currency. You you will receive a 30 days visa on the airport, but you can extend it in Bali up to maximum 60 days. The requirements are to have a return flight ticket, a complete vaccination certificate, hotel bookings and this apps filled and QR codes generated. If you want to stay longer than 60 days, you will have to apply for a B211A visa. Indonesia has one of the strictest drug law policies around the world. The drugs use or possession can lead up to convictions or even death penalty. In here is highly recommended recommended not to mess up with this kind of things and to keep your personal belongings supervised. A new Indonesian law is the talking point of tourists from all around the world that want to visit Bali. The new law completely bans sex outside of marriage and can lead up to one year in prison. This new law won't come in effect for three years. Now it is uncertain on how it will affect tourism in Indonesia, especially in Bali, but rumors of different forums and groups talk about how people will report others for money. Some official sources said that only close relatives of the denounced people will be taken into consideration when conducting an investigation. Getting around in Bali. First thing first, after you'll arrive at Denpasar airport, you'll have to find a way to your hotel in Bali. Most taxis standing and waiting at the airport ask for a much higher price than it should. One way to secure a deal from airport to your hotel is to book a driver in advance or to use one of the car sharing apps. How much should it cost from the airport to some of the most popular spots? If you need a ride to Ubud, expect quite a long journey, especially due to traffic. It could take up to 90 minutes and it will cost around 350,000 rupiahs. If your hotel is in Kuta, Seminyak or Changu, you will have to pay about 150,000 rupiahs and you will get there in about 30 minutes. All costs and duration are approximate. It all depends on the traffic, hotel location and offer at that time. A personal driver or tour guide in Bali is probably the best way to get around the island, especially if you are more than two persons. Besides the piece of 
of mind of having a car secured for the entire day, it also has some other benefits. One of them is that they know their way around the island and the most popular spots. Sometimes they will negotiate for you, advise you when needed and you will get important information from a local. If you are more than two persons, getting a guide for a day will cost almost as much as ordering a car for every location you will visit. As approximate cost, for 6 hours tour you will have to pay around 500,000 and for a 10 hours tour you will have to pay around 700,000. All prices are approximate depending on what you want to visit and the distance between them. The car sharing apps became more and more popular in Bali. Here you will not find Uber but you'll have Grab and Gojek. They are great apps that will help you secure cars for your trips. On those apps you can also order food, medicine or any other things that you need. Also from here you can ask for a scooter driver to come and pick you up. If you want a scooter expect to pay about half of the price of a car. As an advice check the prices on both apps before you order a ride. Another great way to travel around Bali is by renting a scooter. It is the fastest and cheapest way to explore this beautiful island. For renting a scooter you will need to show your passport and to have scooter or motorcycle international driving license. It is mandatory because a lot of accidents happened on the island especially involving tourists that do not know how to ride a scooter. The daily cost for a scooter is about five dollars but the longer you will rent it the cheaper the price. The town of Ubud is the official cultural capital of Bali. It is also known as a center for traditional dance and crafts. Ubud is surrounded by the rainforest and rice fields and terraces. This is the traditional heart of Bali. Here you can spend your vacation in an authentic Balinese house, explore the rice fields and spend some time with the monkeys. Ubud is cheaper than other places in Bali, but very rich in culture and activities. If it is the first time on the island, we do recommend to spend time in Ubud. Shops, barrooms, temples and monkeys. Here you will have it all. Seminyak is a beach resort area in Bali. It is in very close vicinity of Kutai and Changu that are the other popular seaside towns. The special thing about this part of the island is that no matter the time of the day, you will have something to do. The place is full of shops, cafes and restaurants for every taste and budget. In Seminyak you can find some of the most popular and Instagrammable restaurants and bars and also very beautiful but quite pricey beach clubs. Sanur is a beach town in the southeast of Bali. It is very popular amongst tourists, especially for the large beach area and relatively cheaper prices. It is a traditional but hype Balinese town. Being a city, it is really easy to experience the local life and blend with the locals. Besides being a popular beach destination, it is also known for their night market and multitude of shops. One of the most spectacular things about the beach area in Sanur is that you have the perfect view of Mount Agung. The real diamond of Bali should be considered Sidaman. It is a small town hidden between the rice terraces at the foot of the mountains. The whole Sidaman Valley is spectacular. Here is Bali's nature at its best. Although being extremely beautiful, the whole area is not that popular amongst tourists because it is not that close to Ubud, the airport or other popular spots in Bali. The number one beach resort town for families, honeymooners and in general people who do not want to spend their energy exploring the island. Here is the perfect place to lay on the beach, have a cocktail and just relax. All of this comes with a price. Nusa Dua is the most expensive part of Bali, as a comparison it is close to European expensive. I will not argue that this part of Bali is beautiful, extremely well kept and the services amenities provided are impeccable, but all comes with a very large cost. Show respect. One of the few things that you should keep in mind while traveling to Bali is that you will be respected and treated kindly. This is how everyone should interact with others. Bali is full of traditions and you should respect them. While visiting a temple, wear a sarong. They will provide it to you at the entrance. Do not display your affection in public or make obscene gestures. Keep your eyes on the ground while walking. They will put daily offerings at the entrance of their houses, stores and restaurants. Do not step on them, do not destroy them. In Bali, just a few shops have fixed prices, the rest is about the negotiation. Of course, everyone loves the game and the excitement of getting a lower price. If you accept a little bit of a higher offer that you initially had in mind, don't think of it as you have been ripped off. The minimum wage in Bali does not compare to the one in the countries where most visitors come from. They put a lot of work and effort to make the things they are selling and that is the way they will provide for their families. Respect their work and try not to get things for almost free. Be aware of the exchange scammers, especially in Sanur, Kuta and Seminyak area. Unfortunately, it is a situation that brings shame to the island. Some exchange offices will try to scam you. You should only exchange money at official exchange offices. You will recognize them easily as they have huge windows, usually a guard and a lower rate than the scam offices. 
If you see an exchange rate like this at the exchange office and the other like this at an exchange in a shop, be sure they will scam you for the money difference. We have tried and observed their techniques. First clue besides the appearance of the office is that they will only have 50,000 rupees notes or even smaller ones. They will count a lot of times and will tell you to count as well. Every time you will count, they will recount it and drop some money under the table. We were two, one was counting, one observing. Just be aware and even if you think you will get more money, actually you will lose a lot. Use mosquito repellent. Unfortunately, dengue is a real issue. Being a tropical island, humidity is at its place. Where is water and humidity, there will be mosquitoes. If you don't use mosquito repellent, you will probably be covered in mosquito bites. Unfortunately, we forgot to put repellent on while leaving the airport in Jakarta and we were attacked. Four days after that, the symptoms appeared and the awful dengue was messing with us. High fever, horrible sore throat, muscle pain, headaches and eye pain were just a few of them. We were lucky enough to not have a severe form of dengue. Don't drink the tap water. In Bali, the tap water is not potable. It is only for showers and washing. The main issue of drinking tap water is that you will probably get Bali belly. Severe tummy pain will show up as the water is contaminated. Only drink bottled water and even wash your teeth using it. Waterfalls. Bali has so many waterfalls, one more beautiful than the other. They are hidden gems in the tropical forests. They were put on the list as an adventure because it is one to get to them. Even though the pathway to the waterfall is marked and in perfect shape, it is usually a long way in the forest with ups and downs, stairs, animals and different rainforest moments. But all is worth it, as you will discover a piece of heaven. As it is an island, it is surrounded by water and beach areas. Some of the most exciting things to do in Bali is to hop on some water sports adventure day. You should try them all, as they are very cheap in comparison to other beach destinations. Rafting in Bali. It is one of the best things to do on the island. We have tried rafting in Sidaman area, as we were told that is better than in Ubud. There we have spent two and a half hours of fun, adrenaline and excitement while trying rafting for 18 kilometers on the Sungai Telagawaha. It is a much faster and less deep river than the one crossing Ubud. The whole experience was amazing. Another great way to spend a day is at the Waterbomb. It is a great water park in Kuta area. They provide a lot of slides, extremely clean surroundings, sunbeds, changing rooms and great bathroom area. The whole park is super clean and very well kept. For sure a day here will be a day full of fun. Waterbomb also have a little kids area and it is perfect for families with children as it is all safe and clean. If you love water and sea life, for sure you must try scuba diving. The whole island is surrounded by coral reefs and the marine life is diverse and colorful. You will see beautifully colored fish but expect the water to be a little bit cloudy. Take good care while diving and always listen to your instructor. The Monkey Forest As the name says, this is a forest full of monkeys. This place is the home of the Balinese long-tailed macaque. In over 12 hectares of forest, more than 1,000 monkeys reside here. This beautiful natural park is located in Ubud area. It is in close vicinity of one of the main streets in Ubud and many cafes and restaurants can be found at the entrance. The entrance fee cost is 80,000 rupees for adults and 60,000 for children. The tickets can be bought from the entrance or online on their official website. The Galalang Rice Fields the rice fields are UNESCO World Heritage Site. The view and the place are so spectacular that they are a real must-do or must-visit in Bali. They are located in Ubud area, in a village in the northern part of Ubud. It is open daily from 7 am to 6 pm and you just can go there and take your pictures or you can wander through the rice fields and connect further with the place. At the very top you will find the famous rice field swings. Those are situated in some specific spots for the best view. They are temples. The whole island is filled with beautiful and historical Hindu temples. Even though they are important places of worship for the Balinese and Hindu people, they are so history-rich and beautiful that you must not miss visiting at least one of them. Some of the most visited and popular temples in Bali are Lempuyang, Tamana Yun, Ulundanu Beratan, Goa Gaja, Uluwatu and Tirta Ganga. Ubud Market one of the most visited places in Ubud is the Ubud traditional art market. For the love of shopping and exploring, it is a must-do. Here you will find lots of stands filled with beautiful clothes, bags and traditional arts and crafts. This is one of the best places for souvenir shopping and also to buy yourself a reminder of Bali. For ladies, this is one of the best places to buy unique handbags and accessories. The Silver and Wood Carving Workshops 
Another unique and interesting thing to do in Ubud area is to go to a traditional silver or wood workshop. In there you will find all about the art of making silver jewelry or how to transform a piece of wood in literally art. They are worldwide known for their wood sculptures. It will be a very interesting experience and also a great opportunity to discover how the traditional Balinese statues are made. Nusa Penida Nusa Penida is one of the Nusa Islands that belongs to the administrative region of Bali. A day tour or even a few days spent on the Nusa Penida are a must. Here are the picture-perfect beaches and the formidable turquoise water. Nusa Penida is just at a short ferry ride from Sanur Harbor. There are lots of popular tourist spots on the island and if you only do a day tour here, you will probably miss some. In my opinion, it is best to spend at least two days on Nusa Penida to be able to really enjoy it. Garuda Park The Garuda Vishnu Cultural Park is popular but somehow not that popular. It is a theme park near Ungasan Badung Regency. The park has the tallest statue in Bali a statue that is 30 meters taller than the Statue of Liberty. Every day there are several dance performances, shops and restaurants, museums and recreational spots. In the evening, starting from 6 pm, there will be a traditional Kechak dance show. Sidaman Area The Sidaman Area is the hidden gem of Bali. Here is for the nature lovers. The whole Sidaman Valley is spectacular. The rice terraces are surrounded by the mountains and the rainforest. It's an out of this world place that you must not skip. To ride their food a real must-do in Bali is to eat their delicious food. Leave the western food for home and eat at their varungs. Balinese food is delicious. Fruit paradise. Bali is a tropical paradise, so fruit are in the perfect place. You could also enjoy their famous smoothies, smoothie bowls and fresh juices. Wander around the streets. A great way to explore the beautiful Balinese towns is just by wandering the streets. It is a fantastic feeling to observe the people in their day-to-day -day activities, to see tourists roaming the streets and to enter little shops and cafes. Go grocery shopping! One of the best ways to blend with the locals is to do what the locals do. Exploring a local market is one of the best ways to connect with them. It is a fresh roots paradise. In there, the fruits and every other things that you can find in Bali is at much smaller price. The fruits are better and the prices are lower. Chase sunsets. If you are on the west side of Bali, a great activity is to chase sunsets. The Seminyak area is one of the most popular spots to observe the show that the sky is performing at sunset. Where to stay in Bali? Being a very popular tourist destination, the Balinese had to adapt and offer a big range of accommodation. There are different types to choose from. We will try to explain the differences, tell the price range and also give our honest opinion. The classic hotel. As it is a hotel, daily cleaning and breakfast should be available. It is a great option if it stays in your price range, especially for the comfort provided. The Balinese villas. It can be a villa operating exactly as a hotel or a villa to rent as an Airbnb. If you are a bigger group or family and share the expenses, it is a great option to rent an Airbnb. If you choose the hotel villa, it is perfect for couples as it is a cheaper option. There are plenty of traditional Balinese villas in Ubud area, in great locations and at a great price. The guest houses. This type of accommodation is very popular amongst tourists with smaller budgets, but it is not to be avoided. Most of them are cheap, super clean and intimate. You will feel very welcome and well treated. Only downside is that the room sizes are smaller but the comfort is not lacking. For us, Bali is heaven on earth. We are thankful for every day we spend with the locals, for every moment we connected with their impressive nature, for every bite we took from their fruits and food, for every story we heard and for every time we witnessed one of their sacred rituals being performed. Bali is life, but a different life. It is a life where you are more grounded and reconnected with yourself, a life that you are thankful for every day. From the very first moment you will start to feel the energy of the place. It is for sure something different, not easy to explain. 